ACATS's Ed, the automatic bud here, supplying the viewers with a review of a shoe brand that I've never tried before. What's that coming over the hill? It's the on-running cloud monster. Looks like something out of a sci-fi film, doesn't it? Thanks for tuning in, cats. It's always appreciated. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, it's free of charge, so you're not going to lose out either way. Hit that bell as well to get notifications when I launch those new videos for you. Give this video a thumbs up, like, and sharing it with your running buddies really helps us out a great deal. Merci beaucoup. I picked up a UK size 11 of these Cloud Monster shoes from On. I think it's a US 11 and a half. Their sizing's a little bit different. These clock in at 311 grams, which is 11 ounces. I've measured the heel stack here in my pair. I've got about 38 millimeters. And On suggests there's a six mil drop here. So around about 32 in the forefoot. Up to about 13 miles after my initial testing. So that's about 21 kilometers. And just to let you know, these are a pair of shoes I've bought with my own earth credits and props to on running they managed to deliver these from ordering them in 21 hours i've got to say direct from the shoe masters is the way to go if you're going to pick up a pair of on shoes absolutely amazing speedy delivery we shall start with the upper first so lots of things i enjoy about this upper and a few that i've got some problems with certainly really love the profile of the shoe it's almost like a sports coupe we have the minty hit of the laces across the top of the foot and the midsole in the evening in certain sort of light is almost glow in the dark i do like the blueberry-ish hint that we have to the upper material here just everything about the angular nature of the shoe reminds me of some sort of complex watch like an architectural masterpiece certainly one of the nicest looking shoes i've picked up this year it just really is very aesthetically pleasing to me in terms of the upper profile the fit's really good as well lots of toe box room there and i think there's about 35 percent recycled materials here in the cloud monster i think areas of the heel the tongue and laces and even the sock liner all refashioned to help mother earth pretty much true to size this one i'd go with your typical running shoe size no need to go a half up as simpler up as you can get really no tongue slippage over the miles thus far and at last a design that doesn't bunch or crease as you pull the laces in i think that can sometimes make a running shoe look really unsightly and just kind of puts you off just feels uncomfortable on the top of your foot no problem with that in this cloud monster from on the only real bulk to the actual upper is that heel padding it's relatively considerable back there and you have a quite low profile heel counter as well this relatively wide simple mesh and a partially gusseted upper on this one two worries though i do have about the lacing on the shoe how long will it be before these sort of felt lace loops start to disintegrate They're already fraying a little bit and that does worry me after such a small meager number of miles will they last the test of time well we shall see i suppose but once they wear out shoes toast sadly i have experienced some lace pressure over the top of the foot here i have tried to alleviate it using a runner's knot on the left shoe it wasn't so bad on the right did in fact remind me of the first version of the zoom fly i used to get some really bad pain there i haven't experienced that since that shoe just feels like the laces are just cutting into the top of my foot a little bit quite unpleasant with a slightly thicker sock and that runner's knot, I have managed to alleviate it a little bit. Other than that, quite a well-crafted upper design here. Just need a little bit of padding around the top here, around the last eyelets. After my initial runs, I'll give it a 2.5 out of 3. I'm not going to totally discount it yet. It just is a bit of a problem. Midsole now. Midsole wise, well, holy cow. That hard plastic board is pretty much directly below the insole there is a thin layer of foam there but you're pretty much running on the board and i think once the initial step in comfort of that insole has worn down and compressed a little bit it's quite firm it does remind me a little bit of that hard strobel board that you get underneath the insole on a jordan 5 that board is then attached to the helion foam which makes up the cloud technology now this shoe may be called a monster 
but I think it's a little bit of a misnomer. Very different feel to other Max Cushion shoes that I've tested out over the last couple of years. I mean, the midsole's mainly made up of air, really, just thin air. A large amount of the foam here does cup around the foot, certainly in the heel section. Everything from here forwards, pretty much, is just cupping around the foot, so it's not underfoot. You could say quite a bit of the midsole height here isn't really benefiting you in terms of cushion. I have to say though that the extra foam around the foot there does really improve the stability of the Cloud Monster. As I've been running in it initially, I found it to be a very stable offering. Step and feel of the shoe really is from that insole. That's pretty much all there is between your foot and that speedboard. So don't expect Primex style levels of cushion here and squash, you're not gonna get it in the Cloud Monster. Not like Fuel Cell in any way. In fact, I'd suggest it's a little bit more like react the more squashy react that we find perhaps in the pegasus trail 3 and most of the flexibility that we have in the midsole here is from those hollowed out sections you can feel to some extent as you're running in the shoe those sort of cloud pods compressing and collapsing a little bit it's certainly a very unique feel in this shoe but that does tend to sort of become more natural over time certainly not a higher paced option this one i've tried some faster efforts here and there thrown in some reps some mile repeats and yeah it's not a shoe for that i found these suit best some easy to steady paces so for me that's anywhere between about 8 minutes 15 per mile and 7 minutes 30 per mile probably a shoe comparable to the glide ride maybe from asics or even that zoom fly it does feel kind of like that i think it's the rigidity of that speedboard a slightly firmer endorphin pro maybe but with a more substantial upper yes there is some rigidity here in the cloud monster but I think the compression and collapse of those pods here won't be for everybody. How long that Helion foam in the Cloud Monster here lasts is going to be dictated by time. It's not a midsole material that I am very experienced with, so I'm not going to make any bonkers suggestions or predictions. Again, once the structure starts to fail with these holes in the midsole material here, how's it going to feel? I'm not entirely sure. I'll give it a 2.4 out of 3 for the midsole so far. Versatility and durability, probably my main concerns. Not a max cushion shoe, despite all the hype that's going on around it. Outsole now. Very palatable on road and concrete. The Cloud Monster has performed well so far on debris-free terrain. Though, of course, there is the opportunity for rocks, sticks and grime to get lodged into those holes. I haven't had any yet, though I did get a biro lid stuck in there because I was trying to see how far the speedboard was exposed. So yeah, I felt stupid. I think it's more a matter of time though getting something stuck in there. Just avoid using it on anything that isn't road or concrete. Again, that's going to limit the versatility of the shoe a little bit and it could put that outside of your remit. Rubber wise though, I am enjoying the uneven pattern here on the outsole of the Cloud Monster. Quite grippy, does the job and there's lots of it. Only a minimal amount of exposed midsole material here, which is what you want really in a sort of long distance shoe. In the wet seems as good as any I've tried out recently, though I would be a little bit cautious as to the fact there's a little bit less actual ground contact outsole here. It's mainly just those specific pieces, so you've got a little bit less underfoot in terms of surface area. There's not an awful lot of opportunity though for bits to get stuck in the rubber of the outsole, so that's a plus point. Probably the most successful part of the shoe so far in this review I'll give it a 2.7 out of 3 for the outsole after my initial runs. Value now. So this one sent me back 150 earth credits and I've got to be honest, it's a bit pricey. That is a high cost for a shoe that's kind of for easier days, maybe some steady runs. Could be reasonable in the long run. I shall take it out very soon and test that out for you. I think it's going to be too many earth credits for many to consider. Especially when the max cushion element of the shoe really isn't that maximally cushioned. There's many other shoes out there that provide more forgiving foot feel and for less outlay as well. Still, don't want to put the shoe down too much. It's not perfect, but what is? It's nothing that a bit of extra tongue padding here or extra attention to the laces can't sort of negate to some degree. It's a forgiving shoe, certainly, but there's somewhat limited surface versatility. If you're looking for a max cushion shoe, I think perhaps it's not really the answer. If you want a fun and interesting shoe to try out, 
you know what to do. If you're gonna compare it to something like the Endorphin Speed, for example, well, I find that shoe a little bit more forgiving. The rigidity of the nylon plate in that one isn't anywhere near as inflexible, and it's not really that much more expensive than the Cloud Monster either. So is it gonna replace my Prime X? Not a chance. For value, I'm gonna give it a 2.4 out of three after my initial runs. So if I've totaled the scores up correctly, that gives us a 10 out of 12 for the on-running Cloud Monster. A tongue here with the thickness of an after eight dinner mint spoiling the show. Have you picked up the on-running Cloud Monster? What did you make of it? Has it been on foot permanently since you received it? Or are you running for the hills? Let me know in the comments below. Musical interlude now. This is one to avoid. If you get the opportunity to listen to an album by Machine Gun Kelly, I believe it's called Mainstream Sellout. Absolutely switch off, go to anything else that you can find. As somebody that lived through that sort of pop, punk, emo kind of period, I remember doing sound for loads of bands who were just these cookie cutter sort of efforts that just all sounded the same. Very fast double kick drums, dreadful guitar tones and formula-like tracks that all sounded very similar. It all sounds like it's been put through auto-tune, every single word, every single sentence. It, it's absolutely terrible. The production on it is just so synthetic. It sounds like a robot has produced it, like someone's just put a preset on to sort of sculpt the sound and make it as irritating as a wasp stuck in your office. There's a song that features Lil Wayne that there's just no redeeming factors about it whatsoever. Avoid this at all costs, everybody. Machine Gun Kelly's mainstream sellout. Absolute trash. Hope I've helped you out with that one. Please run for the hills if you come into contact with that album. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications when I roll out those new videos for you. And give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bird, and I'll be seeing you.